Hi everyone, my name is Moni. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be discussing the new second edition of Great Western Trail. This one's designed by Alexander Pfister and published by Egertspiel and Plan B Games. And Monique and I have actually covered this game in the past. It is a pretty heavy Euro game in which we are going to be transporting cattle and cows to, from Kansas City to different parts of the United States. Uh, if you are interested in seeing how that game is played, we did do a full two-player playthrough, which we'll leave a link in the top corner here. Yes, it was a part of our Alexander Pfister series that we recently did a few months back. Mm -hmm. And so this is a game that has been notoriously kind of in and out of print mm -hmm. in the past. Yep. And so now we have a new second edition that is coming to retail. This uh, version of the game is going to be available, I guess, in a very limited release at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably bringing a few copies with them. Sure. And then after that, it will experience a more uh, wider retail release. This is also the first in a trilogy of games mm -hmm. that they're going to be releasing that uh, has never been seen before, really. Yep. And so in general, this version of the game primarily has a lot of new uh, design upgrades. or so graphic design upgrades, mm -hmm. component upgrades, a lot of that kind of stuff. Right. But there are also some new components that are available in this edition of the game that were not in the original version such as a new variant, a mm -hmm. gameplay variant, as well as a solo mode. And so today is going to be a lot more of a comparison and contrast video so that you can see whether or not it's right for you. But before we get started, if you do like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, I think we're ready to begin, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So if you please direct your attention to this end of the table, we have here the new Second board. edition of the Great Western Trail board. Yes. Um, as you can see, it is a lot more, uh, I guess, colorful. Vibrant. It's a more bit. vibrant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the same, um, you know, layout, layout of the board. Yeah. But uh, the colors pop a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The trail itself does not, though. <laughs> that is the, the one thing that we noticed when we first kind of pulled this out. Yeah. Uh, it is more of a kind of like a watercolor painting look to it uh, compared to the original, the predecessor. Mm -hmm. But... Um, yeah, it is easy to get kind of kind of lost in these trails. But as you start to build out buildings, things kind of become more clear. Yeah, it's really not that bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that we kind of noticed when we pulled out this board is we're no longer going <laughs> to San Francisco. Yeah. We have New York here. So I guess they wanted to make it a little bit more uh, geographically accurate, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we are going eastward here. Right. Other than that, there are only a couple of other uh, design changes specifically to the board, mm -hmm. one of which are some of these uh, kind of like more advanced building spaces right. have different benefits, specifically this one. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people may actually really care about is Kansas City no longer gives you six coins. They've decreased that value to four. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, when you play the game, one of the strategies is, you know, that your first delivery to just deliver to Kansas City will just take the hit at the end of the game. Get some cash early. Yeah, and you get yeah. some cash early and mm -hmm. that kind of helps set you up for the rest of the game. Well, it's not as lucrative right. anymore. <laughs> I think they probably looked at it and said, okay, people are abusing that a little bit too much. Maybe. So how do we balance it? So. Now you get four coins instead of six. Yes. On the opposite hand, though, there are some areas that are less punishing, namely in the, the outlaw section. This is now called the outlaw section mm -hmm. because we have some uh, component changes, which we'll talk about in a second. Right. But uh, previously, the first three spots here, uh, if you were to take a TP off the board, which mm -hmm. is that's what it was in the first edition, you would have to pay money. Right. Now, none of these spots cost you money. They're all going to be lucrative. Right. You may notice the very first spot here also gets you this new type of token, mm -hmm. which is specific to the second edition. These are, I believe they're called exchange tokens, but yep. we'll talk about that uh, later when we talk about the new components. And you also see that special benefit up here so that you can uh, earn it for being in both of these two cities that no longer uh, makes you lose a point. Penalize you, yeah. Right. Now, speaking of the outlaw section, in the previous version, this was where the native teepees were. So anytime you'd go there, you'd be removing those teepees. Mm -hmm. They've actually upgraded it or changed it to outlaws because uh, that was kind of an issue in the past. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, so that's definitely an area of improvement. In addition to the new outlaws, we also have new workers. And so mm -hmm. this new second edition features a more diverse cast of workers. We have the cowboy, builder, and the engineer. And so it's really nice to see uh, those design changes as well. Mm -hmm. So in the previous game, uh, Purple was the engineer. Mm -hmm. It is now the builder, which yes. acts as the craftsman from the previous one. Right, exactly. Now we also have new player boards. And this is probably my favorite, uh, one of my favorite design upgrades, right? This was something because... that uh, we definitely needed in the original game. Right. And I know there's a lot of people that kind of did their DIY uh, for this. The workers fit nicely right in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a nice, clean look uh, to the player board. So very, very functional for us. We're very practical gamers yeah. so this is one of our definitely one of our favorite aspects of this edition totally the game now also comes with these new bags and so these are very convenient so very you don't welcome just addition to this game yes the tiles and stacks 
Yeah, if you did not have an organizer, and even if you did have an organizer, to shuffle these to get the game set up was mm -hmm. kind of a pain, honestly. And so to be able to just draw from the bag of yes. the appropriate um, number right. uh, makes it a lot easier for yeah. you. Yeah. And if you don't remember contextually where this is from, uh, this is for when you are refilling tiles when you get to Kansas City yep. and you have to choose tiles to put out onto the board, mm -hmm. you can now just pull from these bags. You don't have to worry about any of that setup stuff. Just have the bags, right? <laughs> there was definitely times in the game where it's like, I'm shuffling it and I, I, I because I was the one that shuffled it, I kind of know where certain things are. Yeah. And it's like, I don't mean to know that. Right, right, but right. But right. from a bag, it's always random. Eliminates that issue. Yeah. Player pieces. The player pieces have also experienced an upgrade. They this have. is Okay, I will, I will say, this is probably my least favorite part <laughs> about the new edition because <laughs> they now have hats. <laughs> interchangeable hats by the way yes they're interchangeable they're the hats of the player colors um the actual meeples are not but you you take off the hats and you can kind of mix and match them uh you like them right <laughs> uh they're growing on me but they're, they're they're ridiculous i remember that when we uh when we unboxed it i was like what are these now <laughs> you can yeah. i mean there are a lot of people who will think these are cool, but I, I'm more of a, I'm a basic person when it comes to my meeples, I guess. Sure. But anyway, player they hats. They are good quality hats, though, I will They're say. They're fantastic quality yeah. hats. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, lastly, we have uh, new designs to the cow cards. Mm -hmm. So all the cards have pretty much been renamed, except for like one or two of them. Right. They, they, they really have all been renamed. Renamed, yeah. And there's all new artwork. There's really new all, all new artwork on every single bit of mm -hmm. this edition. Mm -hmm. But uh, all of the numbers are the same right so balance wise um the distribution of the cards are exactly the same yeah mathematically the the there's still you know a certain set of fives ones twos things like that yes uh, there is a new variant, which we are going to discuss in a second, that does introduce new cow cards. But if mm -hmm. you completely eliminate that variant, you can still play the same base game of Great Western Trail with this dis distribution of cards. The only exception, of course, is going to be the uh, minor changes to the game board. That's right. not going to be the same from the first edition. Right. And so those are a majority of the design changes that we've noticed. Um, we may be missing some, but that's mm -hmm. just from what we've seen. And so now onto the new additional components that are not a part of the uh, the first edition. Mm -hmm. The first thing is there are four new uh, station master tiles. Yep. The first edition of the game comes with five of them. Mm -hmm. And so in this second edition, we have now nine, nine but yep. you still only play with five. Exactly. So you're going to play, you know, with a different set of five every time you play the game. Mm -hmm. Just a little more variability. We also have the addition of two new building tiles per player. Mm -hmm. So the original game came with 10. 10. Now we have 12. Yeah. So we have um, 11A and 11B, mm -hmm. which essentially allow you to take up to two hazards off the board for a price of two two bucks each. 12A gives you a coin for every builder that you have employed and also lets you move um, additional space forward. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite sides allow you to move your locomotive up depending on how many hazards you've already taken off the board. And uh, 12B gives you two coins for every station that you're at and also gets you an exchange token, which is another new component mm -hmm. added to this edition. Yep. Each player will start with one of these. The game comes with a total of 12. So there are other ways that you can acquire this throughout the game, namely yes. on the board here, as well as if you were to place your markers out in between St. Louis and Bloomington. Right, or if you were to put out that, that, building, that building that gives them to you. Exactly. And so the way that this works is at any time, it doesn't have to be your turn, it can be your opponent's turn, you can spend this in order to essentially exchange up to two cards from your hand with your draw deck. Yep. So it, it basically acts uh, just like one of those auxiliary actions mm -hmm. that allow you to draw a card and discard a card, yep. except you can do it for up to two cards. Right. So this is a little bit more of a forgiving mechanic, I suppose, yep. that's, that's introduced into this edition of the game. Mm -hmm. And the last two new additions to this game are probably going to be uh, two of the biggest selling points, mm -hmm. I guess. And it's going to be the new uh, gameplay variant as well as the solo mode. Mm -hmm. So the gameplay variant int introduces this new breed of cows called, I don't know how, it, how it's pronounced. I think it's Cimental. 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 That's what I'm thinking. Let yeah. us know in the comments down below mm -hmm. if you know how to pronounce that, the name right. of that cow. And this new breed comes in three different values. We have two, four, and five. And so at the start of the game, the value two cows are going to be shuffled in with the rest of the cow stack that's going to be uh, laid out, I guess, depending on player count, mm -hmm. uh, in the cattle market. Right. And so in a two-player game, uh, it's going to be nine cows now, which Instead is a two additional than the, in the first edition. Yep. And any of the cemental cows that come out are, are placed in their own category over here. And the, you have now this overlay tile that you need to use in order to play with this variant. Yep. Because essentially, whenever you go to uh, purchase cattle from the cattle market, you can now, with one cowboy, spend eight coins to take one uh, value two cemental cow. Or if you have two cowboys, you can spend five coins to do this. 
The levels four and five, you never purchase from the cattle market. Mm -hmm. The way that that works is when you get to Kansas City, if you have any of this breed of cow in your hand, you can upgrade all of them yep. to the next value. So if you have a, a value two, you can upgrade it to a value four, yep. and then your value two goes out of the game. And uh, if you have any value four, you can upgrade that to value five. Right. The catch though is this breed still acts as one breed. So if I have a value two and a four in my hand, by the time I get to Kansas City, I can only um, I can only collect on one of those cards. So you naturally you would take the higher one. Yes. So you're kind of taking a hit when you go there to upgrade your cards, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a nice way for you to get higher valued cows, especially like in the past when I've been kind of shut out from a from hiring cowboys. Yeah, uh -huh. And it's for me, I have a hard time purchasing cattle anyway, <laughs> because my brain doesn't really work that way. Uh, and so this is kind of a nice way for you to to care about that, that aspect of it yeah. less, I guess. And there are victory points on those higher level cows. So yes. that's also something there. Exactly. But again, this is a variant. So if you just don't want to have to worry about this at all, you don't have to play with it. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the solo mode. Now, neither of us have tried the solo mm -hmm. mode, but we've read uh, we've, we've read the rule book so mm -hmm. that we know how it works. And essentially with the solo mode, you now have a second player, like an AI named Sam. Yep. And so you're essentially simulating a two player game. You can dictate the difficulty level. It says in the rule book how you can do that. Mm -hmm. And Sam plays with their own deck of cards. And so you basically draw a card from Sam's deck and you do what it says. Sam's player piece is going to move a certain number of spaces across the board, but they will take the actions that are dictated on their card. Right. And the thing that's neat about the solo mode is there is a specialization component to it because that is a big part of the game. When mm -hmm. you play the game, you kind of pick a strategy and you right. try to go with it. Right. Like, are you going to go cowboy heavy? Are you yes. going to try to do the engineer strategy? So Sam is going to do something similar to that. Exactly. Uh, Sam is going to start the game with one additional worker and whoever they start the game with, that is going to be their spe specialization. Mm -hmm. And so anytime they take actions, they're going to be leaning towards that strategy. So right. if they have, if they start the game with an engineer, then they're going to try to do like an engineer heavy strategy. Mm -hmm. And if that dynamic were to change halfway through the game where they would have a majority, maybe uh, cowboys, then the specialization would flip to the cowboys. Yeah. And then now they're going to go a cowboy heavy strategy. So essentially they're not married to it, but yes. it at least gives them a focus. Exactly. Sam does not have any uh, cattle. They don't have any money. Mm -hmm. uh, they just pretty much score uh, in, in the other ways that you can score. Mm -hmm. And whenever they acquire those objective cards, all of them are considered for fulfilled, fulfilled. by the end of the game. Yep. And so that is as much as we know about the solo mode. Mm -hmm. It's called the lonely are the brave. Yep. So for all you solo gamers out there, that might be a, uh, you know, a really nice reason to want to pick up this copy of the game because there is no solo mode in the first edition right. and there you have it that is everything that we know about to our knowledge as to what the differences are between the first and second edition now of course the question is do you need the second edition or uh, you know what what our thoughts are on this new edition of the mm -hmm. game we did not own the first edition of Great right. Western Trail. We so, borrowed the copy of that game in order to make a video. Mm -hmm. And so for us, this is a no-brainer, right? Like uh, we didn't have a, a copy of the game. It was hard to get. And uh, this is just, to me, a better version of it. Um, I actually really like the graphic design changes, but that's all going to be subjective. You know, that's all going to be really up to you and what you prefer. Um, I really like the changes that they made to the workers and to the outlaws. And I really like having that variant. I mm -hmm. don't know if I'm always going to play with it. I don't know if I'm ever going to play with it, the, honestly. Oh, the, the, the extra cows variant? The extra cows, yeah. but I really like having that as an option mm -hmm. because maybe, you know, maybe we'll learn to love it. Yeah, exactly. Um, for me, I like the graphic design changes of the board, but for some reason, I like the old-timey box art. Oh, the better. box that, yeah. The Mount Rushmore of Angry, angry Men. <laughs> It, I don't know why I like that one a little I bit I like better. the look of this one better, but uh -huh. I know what you mean in that, uh, you know, Great Western Trail has become such a popular game that yeah. that is the image. That is Great Western Trail it, in It's my hard mind. for my brain to yeah. be like, okay, it's no longer those three angry people. Right. And now, now this. Now this is going to be, this is the first of a trilogy. And yeah. so the other two games that are going to be going to be released, um, and they're, they're going to be released like one after the other. In, Every other year. Yeah, right? sequential years. Yeah. So the next one is in 2022, and then the one after that is year after. But they're all going to have the same kind of... Of a aesthetic aesthetic yeah, in look. the in terms of the box art so mm -hmm. if you want to collect all three uh and you are one of those people who really don't want an outlier mm -hmm. then you're going to want this edition of the game uh, i think they're going to release a second edition of the expansion Real but i will enough. say that this board is the exact same size mm -hmm. as the original one yep. and so if you have the expansion already i don't really see why you can't play with it Yep. Now, if you already have a copy of the first edition, and you all, and especially if you also have the expansion, mm -hmm. it's going to be a hard call whether or not you want to upgrade to this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily know if the design changes are going to be enough. 
for you to get rid of that copy and then go with this version. But you might really want to if you are a solo gamer. Yeah, the solo game is, is I think, one of the biggest things for this. Yeah. So anyway, that is it for the new second edition of Great Western Trail. Please let us know what your thoughts are on this new edition of the game. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. We know that there is limited information out there regarding this, this copy of the game, and we do have it in our possession, so we are more than happy to answer those questions for you if we can. Yep. And like we said at the beginning of the video, this game is going to be set to release at Gen Con this year. Uh, and then following that, there will be a true retail release after yeah. that. I think there's only going to be limited copies at yeah. Gen Con, mm -hmm. just so you know. Thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.